pawns from the middle of longata, two pawns to mid brain. Okay, three parts of the brain stem. We know about those. Now we have cranial and non cranial nuclei. Okay, so again, cranial nucleus means the nucleus is, is connected with the cranial nerve. Non cranial nucleus means it's not connected with the cranial nerve. Okay, connected to some other function. And this all, is all color coded. So again, this is a good way to, to learn. The color coding, um, the orange are slightly more yellow in the other. The other models are for the non-cranial nuclei. Okay, now starting from the midbrain, these are red nucleus, which is like the round, uh, the round barrel shaped uh, nucleus, and immediately ventral to it, we have the substantia nigra, which is the flat one. Okay, substantia nigra, you know, is a very dark substance containing a dopamine. These are both part of the extra pyramidal motor system. Superior colliculus and inferior colliculus are situated on the posterior side of the brain. We move down again, non cranial nuclei to the pontine nuclei. nuclei. That's all you need to say. These are pontine. What do they do exactly? Well, they have functions in the extra pyramidal system. That's enough. You don't even need to know that. We won't ask you. We plan to ask that question. Uh, olivary nuclei. They're shaped like olives. Okay, they're situated in the medulla oblongata. These are just in the proximal medulla oblongata. They do extend up into the pons, but that's all right. Really, all we all we say about these is they're part of the vestibular equilibratory system, and that's all you need to know. They're non-cranial equilibratory system. The rest are just two sets of nuclei in the posterior part of the medulla oblongata, extending. Quite long structures. These are the nucleus gracilis, nucleus cuneus. These simply are, are synapse stations for the long posterior sensory columns that come all the way up the spinal cord, carrying sensation, fine sensation, and proprioception from distant, distant part. So those are the non, non cranial nuclei. We can then work with the cranial nuclei, which are from number three to number twelve. We don't have to worry about one and two, because cranial nerves one and two do not have brain stem nuclei. Okay, so that's just from three to five. Now, number three, we all know, oculomotor. It drives most of the muscles of the eye. It's also got parasympathetic nuclei attached to it. These are the edinger westphal nuclei. They control uh, pupillary constriction, dilatation, and also elevation of the eyelid. Okay. You can see the nerves come out ventrally in the junction of midbrain and pons. Posterior to these are the trochlear nuclei. This trochlea, the trochlear nerve, number four cranial nerve, is a purely somatic motor nerve. Uh, fourth uh, cranial nerve is responsible for movement. Superior oblique muscle, yeah, superior oblique muscle, or the ocular muscles. It's a, u a u unique feature, an anatomical feature. It emerges from the dorsal part of the midbrain and comes right around the side before supplying the, the superior oblique muscle. We can then move to the pons. Okay, now this very long nucleus, which extends all the way from mi midbrain, above the midbrain, down into cervical spine, is the trigeminal, which is a sensory nucleus. Sensory nuclei are in, in red, in blue in this model. So it's also got a motor nucleus. You know the trigeminal is a mixed mixed nerve. It's a motor motor uh, fibers supply the muscles of mastication, which is chewing our food. And this motor nucleus situated in the middle of the pons. It's the red structure here attached to the trigeminal nucleus. It's a big cranial nerve, the biggest of them, and it has three branches which come out and exit the skull separately: ophthalmic, axillary, and, and mandibular. That's really the. The pons, we can move down to the inferior part of the pons. Uh, the inferior part of the pons has uh, facial and abducens. We'll talk about abducens, that's number six. And the posterior part near the floor of the, the fourth ventricle. You can see where we are here. This is, a, again, a somatic motor nerve to the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. If we paralyze this one, we can't, the eye cannot look to the lateral side. Okay? Simple as that. 
Okay, lateral rectus muscle uh, to sense. Then front of that, near the middle of the pons, we have we have the uh, facial nucleus. Facial nucleus in two parts. Remember, uh, supranuclear um, lesion and infranuclear lesion of the facial give different effects because uh, the superior part and inferior part of the facial nucleus operate differently. Okay, so it's a motor nucleus to the facial muscles. Uh, in, immediately uh, distal to that, we have in the proximal medulla oblongata, the superior salivatory nucleus and the inferior salivatory nucleus. Now from here on down, many of the cranial nerves have more than one nucleus supplying them. The superior salivatory nucleus has fibers which attach to the facial nerve, the seventh facial, facial nerve, to stimulate the uh, salivary flow from submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. The inferior one has fibers which attach to the glossopharyngeal nerve to supply fibers for, for the parotid salivary gland. Extending distally from the, from the inferior saliv salivary, salivatory or salivary nucleus, you can call it either one, is the ambiguous, the nucleus ambiguous. Called ambiguous because it supplies, again, supplies more than one cranial nerve. It has fibers going to dosopharyngeal. This is a motor nerve, dosopharyngeal and vagus. And it continues on as the nucleus to the accessory. The final part extending down into the cervical spine is the nucleus, the motor nucleus of the accessory nerve. Okay, so we've got 9, 10 and 11 being supplied from that long, uh, long ambiguous nucleus. Now looking at the posterior part of the, of the medulla oblongata, we have a long uh, yellow nucleus here. Uh, this is a visceral, visceral motor. Everything in this model, which is yellow, is visceral motor, and that's the dorsal nucleus of the vagus nerve. Okay. Beside it, a long blue nucleus. Everything in blue is a sensory nerve. Is the nucleus of the solitary tract. Again, this is sensory to the upper airway, the upper gastrointestinal tract, and the rest of the gastrointestinal tract and the cardiovascular system. What else? What have we left out? Not a heck of a lot, really. Oh yes, hypoglossal. Hypoglossal is the final one. It's a motor nucleus situated again in the proximal medulla oblongata. It's a red one coming up down here, posterior wall of the posterior part of the medulla oblongata, and it supplies the purely somatic motor nucleus to the hypoglossal nerve, which innervates the tongue movement of the tongue. So happy to take any questions if you have them. But you, you may have a chance to go over these again on Monday. Like I said, we hope to open the, the, the lab for you during Monday morning and afternoon. Separate for classes? Uh, uh, really for anybody who wants to come. But we have, if there's a very large number, we have to rush it. Yes, uh, the normal lecture program will take place on Monday. So anybody who has lectures should come to the lectures in, instead. But there will be time outside of these lectures to go to the practical room if you want to do that. And so, Will the, the practical will be separate for three classes? Uh, that's not planned right now. Just it's open. It's open. Yeah, yeah. So, will the starting time? 10 o'clock. Uh, plan is to be here at 10 o'clock and to work the more, uh, second class in the morning, 10 o'clock to 11.30, and then from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, the nucleus is, is a, a, long, a long motor nucleus in the medulla oblongata, which, has, which, which begins just inferior to the salivatory nucleus and uh, supplies motor to the, the 9th, 10th, and 11th uh, cranial nerve. Yes, yes, yes. That red one? You can tell, it just goes, it's, I mean, on the model, if you look carefully at the model, somebody says to you, what is that nucleus? Well, it only goes to one nerve. And it's the nerve which emerges between the olive and the pyramid. That has to be number 12. Okay. Any questions?